anxiety, frustration, panic, stress, anger. Those are powerful words to describe powerful emotions. And I suspect most of us have felt these emotions in situations as diverse as diverse as work, social, and even family settings. How do we handle it? Well, Martha, in today's gospel story, knows how to handle it. Martha walks over to her invited guest of honor, and she lays out her problem. She says, help me. Tell that sister of mine, Mary, who's sitting right there at your feet. Tell her to come and help me. Now, again, I don't know about you, but to me, that seems pretty straightforward and focused. Martha knows what her problem is. She voices it. Martha asks for help, tells him how to fix it, to meet her expectations and parameters in her time. So, how does the gift of honor Jesus how does he respond? Well, first, Jesus listened to his friend. Martha is a faithful friend, because according to the Gospel, according to Luke, she welcomed Jesus, Jesus who is a man outside of her family circle, and she welcomed him into the home she owns. And in the first century, this was out of the norm. Women did not do that, but Martha did. And she also remained faithful to the Jewish tradition of hospitality. Like Abraham, she set about providing a meal truly worthy of the Lord. And therein lies her problem. She needs help, but she wants Mary to do it her way. So how does Jesus respond to Martha's plea? Remember, she was trying her very best to live in to the life of love and understanding and discipleship. Well, Jesus does not acquiesce, nor does he rebuke. Instead, just like Father Tom told us what Jesus did last week, Jesus flips the expectations again. And he does it. He does it when he tells Martha that only one thing is essential, and Mary has chosen it. Now, I don't believe that Jesus is excluding Martha from this better thing. Instead, I believe that Jesus is inviting Martha to come and sit with Mary and the other disciples and to be a part of his way of love and discipleship. And also, he is inviting her to come and learn how to live into and connect even more deeply with God. But that's not all. I think Jesus is also teaching. Like he did a couple of weeks ago when we read how he sent the 72 at the advance team, how he sent them out to go into the villages how he asked them, he told them, to go out and announce God's kingdom. They were to go out in peace, share peace, and live equally with the people. And by doing so, they built community and relationships that were created in respect, compassion, and love for those whom we might think were the outsiders, the others. And then, when those folks were leaving the villages, the ones that invited them in, they are to leave in peace and say, the kingdom of God has come near you. However, when those villages who did not welcome the disciples in, the disciples were also given instructions. 
disciples were told to leave, not in anger or spite, but to say the very same thing to those people. The kingdom of God has come near to you. Then just last week, we heard about the young man who asked Jesus, well, just who is my neighbor? And again, in response, Jesus didn't label, nor did he name names. Instead, he flips that question again, and he teaches a young man and us. He teaches us how to be the neighbor. And that is, we are to act with compassion and mercy. Compassion and mercy towards not just those in our community, but also those outside of these walls in the larger community, that larger community of God's beloved children. And in those two vignettes, about the 72 and the young man, I believe that Jesus is teaching about how to be a disciple. And then in today's reading, I believe he is inviting, and not just inviting Martha, but also <coughs> you and me to move beyond our self-imposed limitations of discipleship and inviting us to live into the way of the kingdom of God. The biblical scholar John Dominic Croson tells us that the kingdom of God is it's a place where people are enabled to be who they are and empowered to become who they might be. The kingdom of God is a place where we connect with God's love, grace, and mercy, not just for some of us, but for all of us. And it's a place much like the life that Jesus lived here on earth. It's a life where he shared meals with people who were marginalized and disregarded by the powers that be. It was a life where he empowered women by treating them as valued and equal human beings. It is a way of love where justice is practiced and where friendship conquers prejudice and suspicion. It is a place where truth is prized regardless of whoever speaks it. Now I don't know what Martha chose to do. I don't know if she chose to join up with Mary and sit with her or if she chose to remain upset, stressed. But then again, I'm not sure that's the point of this gospel today. I think the point is more about how you and I choose to answer the invitation that Jesus issued. Will we just fume and complain? Or will we choose to walk as empowered followers of Jesus? Empowered followers of Jesus who strive to live into the way of love. It's a way of friendship and respect, of justice and inclusion, a way that refuses to divide people, refuses to divide people into black and white, Republican and Democrat, American and foreign. It is a way that refuses to divide. It's a powerful invitation with powerful words. And what will our response be? Amen. <laughs>